Hello, and welcome back to the second week in this new scene coloring breakdown video series here at Sweet November Stamps. I'm Amy, and I'm the co-owner and illustrator of Sweet November Stamps. We started last week coloring up this spooky cute scene using the new Lovin' from the Coven clear stamp set and the cute little goth modern day um, which has been paired with a couple of older stamp sets. And the cauldron is from the uh, Spookville uh, or no, the Halloween Room add-on set. It's a little 3 by 4 stamp set. And the wood floor is from the Simple Room Background Builder set. And that's what we're going to be working on today. Now, you do not have to have the stamp set. You can absolutely color in a wood floor like this by hand uh, by taking a ruler you know, finding your the back edge of your wall. Now, when you're creating a wood floor on any scene, you want to make sure that you don't stop it directly beneath whatever object or character you have in your scene is. Um, because you got to imagine like this cauldron has bulk to it. It's not a flat standing you know um, like poster it's it's got it works its way around and has you know girth to it so you got to allow for that extra space back behind it so you got to make sure that your flooring extends back further to allow for the room of whatever object or character you've stamped on your scene. So rather than end your floor right here where the, you know, either her feet or the cauldron feet are, you want to start your floor a little further up the card to, you know, allow for that, that the bulk of that cauldron to be able to sit in that space. So you would take your ruler and you know, find your, uh, you know, just, you know, give it, so if you go from the bottom of where it stands, just lift it up a little bit and, and allow for it to have a little bit of room. And then you draw on your lines. This is our baseboard along the wall. And then for this kind of flooring where the boards are extending towards us, the viewer, all you have to do is kind of just pick your own vanishing point. And then you would take your ruler and it just kind of follows, you know, along and, and you make sure that that point stays in the same spot as you move it along. But that's the great thing about this stamp set is that with that simple room, uh, background builder set all the work has been done for you so you simply you know either if you mask like I do you mask off your characters stamp it right on and you're ready to go you could create your background first um, if you're not into masking if you're more into fussy cutting just do the background stamp the flooring on there color it in color in the wall and then fussy cut and glue your characters on top Either way works, and you don't have to worry about figuring out all the line work on your own. Either way, we're going to be adding the wood grain texture, whether you do this, do this by hand or using the stamp set. And that's what we're going to do in this uh, second video. So let's get going on that. Generally, I start with a base coat color that I kind of go over the entire wood floor with. And I'm just gonna, I gotta, you know, decide what color wood. You know, do you want it to be kind of a warmer uh, wood, really dark wood, cherry wood? You know, there's so many choices and there's so many ways it affects your scene. Uh, with this being a Halloween scene, and I want it to stay kind of on the spookier side of things, I think I'm going to kind of be playing with like E40s that have a lot of gray tone to them and the E70s that have kind of a purple blue undertone to them because I think that'll work really nicely with the whole kind of spooky cute vibes that we've got going on. 
or we're going to want to have going on. So to that end, I'm going to come in with E43 and on that baseboard, I'm just going to fill that in. as well as all of our flooring. And it's just a quick wash of color. I'm not worried about it being smooth and blended yet. And actually we're not gonna want this to be super smooth because we're gonna wanna be seeing our wood grain texture that we're gonna be creating. Uh, so as long as I'm, you know, you notice I'm pulling my uh, color in the same direction as my wood grain is going to be. So it's all following uh, the length of these boards. That's going to help when we're creating that wood grain texture. And just using the side of my nib to get a nice wide application of color with each brush stroke. There we go. All right. Okay, now I'm going to jump up to my darkest. And that's going to be E49. And I'm going to use it underneath the baseboard to do a little drop shadow down there. I'm going to use it along each of these artist drawn lines. So if I was drawing this in by hand, when I was using my ruler, I would actually use this E49 and I would just be drawing in these darkest lines directly you know, onto the paper. Um, but because I've got this handy dandy stamp, all I have to do is trace the lines that are already there for me. And you'll notice I'm not really worried you know, I'm just doing it by hand. I'm not pulling out a ruler because I don't need these lines to be super straight. I'm just, these are kind of the, we're creating the shadows um, between the boards here. And I'm also going to be using this to drop in a very heavy shadow. Start working on that directly beneath the cauldron. And her feet. And I'm going to pull my shadows a little further uh, to the right hand side of the card. Our main light source is that cauldron, even though we've got some light that's going to be coming from this potion and those little bottles as well. But the main one I'm worried about is over here. Um, but that's why it's not going to be a really dramatic shadow, but I am going to pull it slightly further to the right hand side away from that light source. Um, underneath from underneath her feet there and that cauldron as well okay now e47 and the e47 is the one i'm going to start putting in the actual like lines of wood grain on my boards here And I'm going to do that using the very tip of the marker. And you want to practice playing with pressure. So as I pull my color, I might start off with a very light pressure. You just let your line go kind of wonky. 
and then maybe give it a little bit more pressure get a little bit thicker line and then lift up again and just play with that pressure as you're sweeping your color in and that'll give you a very organic kind of natural looking wood grain effect rather than it just being all stiff lines through your boards there and you can even as you get confident and you start creating little knots in your wood still playing with pressure the whole time so see the difference in the line work as I kind of you know give it a little bit heavier hand here and there and then pull up you get that nice variation of weight in your line work that's what we're going for when we're creating these wood grain patterns and I just tend to start on the left hand side because I'm right handed so I don't have to kind of drag my hand through stuff that's already done and just kind of quickly and I don't want to fill it in because we're going to add a few different colors um, of wood grain so this is just the first application so I don't feel like I need to fill each and every board completely uh, with the E47 because we will be adding extra lines through there And like I said, just kind of wonky. Let them kind of skip and jump. There's really no right or wrong. As long as you just get these great little crazy lines. Always following the same direction as your boards. You don't want to be taking your line work across this way. Not on the floor like this. You could do your boards going horizontal and then you would be adding in your texture that way, but it's always going to go in the same direction as your boards are coming. And it's going to look a little busy, a little crazy to the eye for quite a while, but uh, you just got to trust the process. We are going to calm it down a little bit at the end. So now I'm not worried about the wood grain on the baseboard that I'm going to keep more of just a solid like it's got a paint on it or something but still brown I just to dis, uh, distinguish it from the flooring I guess is why I don't usually worry about adding the wood grain to it make it stand out a little. And I'm also going to use my 47 to pull out uh, the 49. That is our shadow underneath the cauldron and our witch's feet. And I'm also going to run it with a good amount of pressure right over those 49 line works that are distinguishing between the boards. So just creating shadows on either side of each board and it's deepening the uh, space between them a little bit. So just a heavy hand pulling that color fairly quickly. Okay. 
now I'm going to add in some E77. So this is where I said I was going to be playing with both color families. So I'm just going to add more line work to each of my boards. Getting a little bit of this E70 working throughout. And this is why I didn't want to fill it in completely just with the 47. Next, I'm going to come in with E44. We'll finish off that baseboard. Okay. And then we'll use it to pull out our shadows a little bit more. E49 was a little tacky. I'll have to go in and get that shine off of there. All right, so I'm going to pull a little, you know, my drop shadow underneath that baseboard a little bit more with my E44. And then we're going to start basically I think of it as uh like putting a stain on your your floor. Now I'm going to sweep these lighter colors right over all that wood grain work that we did. And that's what's going to kind of knock it back and make it not look so crazy and hectic to the eye. Come back in with a E74. Uh, and just kind of right over top from that bottom out. And this is adding, like I mentioned, that kind of almost a little hint at the purple tone in the wood there, which for this Halloween scene I thought would be appropriate. And so we still see our wood grain, but it's calmed way down. <laughs> Uh, all right, so if I got, you know, if you got a sticky marker, one of the solutions is you can come in with a white eraser, kind of give it a good rub. And then that'll get rid of any extra shine that that marker would have left. There we go. I won't, you don't want to try to color then back over that once you do that. It just won't accept color very well. So you want to save that for the end. And you can see, you know, it left a couple of little rough patches. I'm okay with that, you know, especially with this being a Halloween scene. Um, 
if things are a little rough and a little worn out, I'm okay with that. All right, so there is our dark kind of purpley brown uh, flooring for our spooky scene. I will call that good for this week. And then hopefully I will see you back here next week uh, when we do the wall uh, behind our little witch in her spell casting room. Until then, stay crafty, my friends. Bye.